to episode two, the O, of the No Chof Desk podcast on the OLB. I'm your host, Stel, and this gentleman right here who you're looking at, well, does he need an introduction? He's won everything that there is to, to win in Cypriot football. He made 132 appearances for Almonia, scoring 17 goals. Leo, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Thank you very much. Uh, you are very, uh, very pleasure to, to be here to speak with you all. And uh, with the with the award of Omani also that uh, I always say was a, a good time in my life that I will never, I will never forget. Uh, and, and we will never forget you, Leo, honestly. It's, been, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on this podcast. And you're the first guest I've actually had on this particular podcast. So it's, it's an absolute right. honor for me. Brilliant. Nice. Love it. So tell me, before we start talking about Omonia, did you play for Corinthians? Was that the first club you played for? Was that where you grew up? Uh, yes, uh, I was playing by... I, I never uh, like it to play uh, at the, the football. I like it futsal, you know. Mm. Uh, I was Brazilian until 15 years old. I was playing just futsal, and uh, okay. that that's what I, I love it to do. But my father he insisted uh, to me to to go to, to normal football. He says <laughs> that the futsal futsal you, have, you don't have future, or you go to stud, or you go to 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 the to the big field. He he he, he tells me. And uh, if, uh, when I was 15, that I changed. It was the first time that uh, I I started uh, to play in, in the grass. It was very strange at the the first few months, the first months. So uh, that time I started to know you have from my city. I think 30, 40 minutes from my city it was another city. They start a, a like a football school there, and uh, I went there and I stayed there one and a half year. And from there. Uh, I goes to Corinthians. Lovely. And which players did you watch and admire growing up? Because we're roughly the same age. So is it Homario? Is it Bebeto? Is it uh, Dunga? Yeah, I have, I have a lot of players that time that we are looking up. But uh, my mm-hmm. favorite player that time was uh, Rivaldo. Ah, yes. Uh, because it was uh, he was left foot also and was the same position that I was playing that time. So uh, I watched him a lot at Barcelona and Brazil national team, and uh, I love it team. Mm, he's got that famous hat trick for Barcelona against Valencia, which got him into exactly. the Champions League. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But we won't talk about what he did against Turkey, even though it was quite funny to be. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, well, you joined Omonia in uh, 2010 from Debrecen, and you were 27. You were at the peak of your career. So, what was it about Cyprus that drew your attention? Uh, I Juriak before us. Uh, mm-hmm. who, he 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 was the first that contacted me. Uh, I was I was uh, at the time I was uh, trying to change the uh, club because I was already three and a half years uh, in Debrecen and uh, I was uh, almost ten years in Hungary and I I wanted to change uh, to go abroad uh, to try myself abroad and. Uh, uh, I think before Christmas, uh, Julius gave me a call and uh, he said that the one friend that uh, was playing with me at the time in Ammonia was Eva Goras, Christopher. And uh, that uh, they were uh, interested uh, about me. Yes, I, I know it from uh, the, about Ammonia and about Cyprus football. And uh, was uh, everything ha- happens uh, so fast, you know. I was just before Christmas in Brazil. Uh, they contacted me, I think, 22 or 23 of December. And then I was uh, in Nicosia and uh, signed the papers. So it was uh, everything so so fast. And, uh, but uh, I, my kids, uh, uh, Alex, was just two months uh, old. Uh, my, my wife was a little bit afraid, but... Uh, but after she, she, they they don't want to 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 left Cyprus, you know. When we <laughs> we decide mm-hmm. to come back, uh, they were crying. They 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 wanted to stay at Cyprus, but uh, this is the life. <laughs> mm. Well, I can imagine it's a very similar culture, isn't it? So it's very easy to adapt. 
Yes, yes, yes. It's a, uh, the first time when I go, I, I think oh, it's, it's like Brazil, you know, that I, I was, <laughs> the people, uh, and everything. The, yeah, exactly. The, uh, and the way of the people, you know, smiling and uh, every, uh, at the beginning, the first, I think the first word that uh, I learned was so, uh, Jaxi and Avrio. <laughs> uh, everything was okay, tomorrow is, tomorrow is going to be okay. Tomorrow yeah. is, I was just loving, like, <laughs> just like in Brazil. <laughs> Very relaxed, very laid back. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. Well, look, I know you did your research on Omonia before uh, you, you signed for the club. So what surprised you most about the club itself? I think the, my biggest surprise was uh, the people, how they like, you know. But that, uh, you know, that uh, it's like a Mediterranean country mm -hmm. and the people, uh, but I didn't expect they, 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 they loved too much the football like uh, like they do so this was uh, I remember I came in January and after when they start the, the playoffs you know the people they, they get crazy so this mm -hmm. this this was amazing did a lot of people turn up at the airport when you arrived yes exactly, exactly. <laughs> they were waiting there and uh, also this this uh, well, that was fantastic I was in the streets everywhere we go you know the people uh, just claiming and uh, uh, in Hungary it's a little bit different the people is uh, more cold uh, mm. with this you know but uh, yes this was also like in Brazil but uh, I was feeling at home I, I could tell by the smile on your face you enjoyed it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah a lot <laughs> brilliant well you, you came from the Hungarian top division and, and many will argue it's technically better than the Cypriot League. Can you describe maybe the pressure you were under to perform week in, week out at Omonia? Uh, excuse me, we have just an interruption. I didn't listen at the end. Yeah, the, the, how, mu how much pressure were you under to perform when you joined Omonia? Because it's, it's probably the biggest club yes. on the island. <clears throat> yes, for sure. Uh, you know, uh, here also I play in the in Ferenc Varos before. Mm. Uh, the Brecen and now here also is the biggest club of Hungary. Pressure here, you know, by the supporters, by the media, by everybody, you know, to to win the titles, to go to Europe. So here, uh, I learned I learned it from before, and the and the Romania was similar, you know. Uh, when I, I just arrived, you know, it was a long time that Romania uh, didn't win the the championship. So mm -hmm. I remember. When uh, we play, I, I think was against a North Star opponents. That last minute, I think we 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 consider goal and we don't mm -hmm. take the championship, that yeah. the, the title, and we need uh, another another game after against Apoel. So I I remember this week uh, everybody was very you know you concentrate, nervous. Uh, you feel it you know in the dress room, uh, also in the street. The people you know just pushing. Uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, we had uh, great players at the time with a lot of uh, experience in the team and uh, we, we handled good. And it was nice that uh, we take the title against Upwell was even better. There you go. There you, go. <laughs> well, look, you mentioned some of the players and I know that we had a few South Americans in the squad. I mean, did this make it easier for, for you to possibly settle or is the separate way of life much more relaxed than elsewhere you played? No, for me it was, uh, uh, of course, it's, uh, for the language it's good, you know, that you have uh, someone that you, you can speak easily at the time. Uh, but everybody was speaking English, uh, so was to communicate was very easy and uh, there were, they were uh, pitch and outside the pitch, you know, you had uh, a good, uh, you know, atmosphere in the dress room. This was very important. So I take it they took you to the Buzuki as well, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go to Cyprus and not go to Buzukia. It's, it's got to be <laughs> yeah. I think Ronaldinho goes to Buzukia in Greece, doesn't he? Ah, for sure. He, mm -hmm. he, when he, he just arrived, I think it was the first day he, he, he already <laughs> take him there. <laughs> brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Um, well, look, you were at the club for five and a half years there, thereabouts. I mean, you, you contributed to many victories. You scored some spectacular goals and you won a few trophies. Now, um, I know our viewers have sent in a lot of questions relating to your favourite moments, which we'll go into yeah. in a moment. But during your time at the club, you experienced quite a few managerial changes. Uh, after Lemonis, we had the likes of uh, Bajovic, we had uh, Savevsky, Lavko, uh, Latina. I mean, the word chaos springs to mind when it comes to yeah. the hierarchy at the time. How much did that affect you and the rest of the squad? 
uh, for sure was uh, not good decisions. You know that uh, we changed a lot of coaches because uh, you know every coach he has uh, his uh, own idea. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, I think uh, okay, a lot of people didn't like too much Lemonis, but he has he, our team at the time was very disciplined, mm -hmm. so this was very important, and this is why we, we take the title also. And after uh, other coach that was uh, very good with very good discipline was Larku. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he he likes uh, too much about tactic, and we, this was very important at the time. This is why we take two clubs. And the, we almost get on the groups. Uh, never helps uh, a lot of change. Of uh, I remember come, I think one Spanish guy. I think he stayed one and a half months, you know, in the club and they just left. Uh, so <laughs> this for, also for the players not good because the coach they bring they want some players that they they want and come another coach and they will not uh, put this player to play because they want they want uh, uh, another players. So, you know, you get the, the time, a lot of players, some was not playing and in the dressing room, you know, it's difficult to, 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 to have a good atmosphere with this, you know, so this not help uh, also in the pitch. Yeah, well, things, it wasn't just us that had these sort of infighting, didn't we? We had different clubs at the time, they were constantly changing managers. And I think in Cyprus, they're very impatient, but you're seeing that more and more in different leagues now, especially in, in, even in the Premier League. I remember Ronald Koeman only lasted maybe a month to, uh, sorry, uh, Frank de Boer only Frank maybe Boer. lasted a month at Crystal Palace. So, yeah, it's, it, it seems to be a, a bit of the norm at the moment. But, um, yeah, let's, let's talk about the supporters here. Um, when you look back at your time at clubs like uh, Palanense and Ferenc Varos, do you see any similarities between the fans of those clubs and uh, Omroni supporters? Uh, look, the Brazil, France, Atletico, Paranaense, uh, uh, they they have a, okay, it's not the biggest club of Brazil, but uh, they have a, a lot of supporters that uh, uh, at home was very difficult to, to mm. win uh, there because the people was fully stained and they make a good atmosphere. But uh, I think the more pass passionate uh, people, I think France, Varese and Omonia fans, they, they close, they are very close, you know, the way how they like, you know, it's like... Uh, uh, in Omone, they used to say a way of life, you know, and here also the, the people of France Varish the same, you know, we, we call it that we are a big family, you know, with the fans, with the everybody, you know, so we, it's the, the way they, they think, because, you know, it's the, it's the team of the people, you know, and, mm. this, and, this, and this, and this bring this, uh, the, the, they can, when, the, the, always I say here also, and uh, when the teams come together with the, with the supports, that time, you can achieve a lot of things mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. this is the most important when the, the team and supports they are in the same way. And I know now because I was speaking with some friends that Omone now has a good team and the people also are, are together. And I hope this year finally they can they can uh, reach the group stage. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully. Well, look, the, the youth academy is thriving um, and people like Jesper Fredberg in the, in the past worked really hard to build up that youth academy. We've seen the likes of Janis and Lois who have broken into the national team. And, you know, I know a lot of viewers are going to say to me, oh, you know, you don't, don't know what you're talking about. But I think right now it is, we're kind of embarking in the golden era of separate football, an era that we've never seen before. We've seen so many promising youngsters break through, not just that on money, but other clubs as well. And I think it's a testament to many owners of clubs that are being very patient with the academy and they're investing in that area as well. Yeah, exactly. Also here in, in Hungary, it's happened this, you know, they invest a lot in academies, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the people, uh, uh, a lot of times they are, they don't have the patience, you know, they, they just want the results after two, three years, but this is a long way, you know, you, you need maybe five, ten years to, to start to have results, you know, you need to change everything, uh, the way of the coach, how they work and everything, and, and after this, the, the results will, will come. Uh, uh, I, I, I saw some uh, uh, young Cypriots, you know, they are doing well uh, uh, in the championship. Also, they are going abroad. Uh, it's, uh, here also in, uh, in Hungary, you know, a lot mm -hmm. of young guys, they are going out. Uh, so, but here in Hungary, the, the only problem is that uh, if the, the national team don't have good results, you know, the people are not uh, happy, you know, that uh, yeah. it's all, always about the money, you know, they are complaining about the money that uh, the, the football players it's difficult, but uh, when you have results, everybody's <laughs> happy. So 
uh, disappoint. Hungary has a mm-hmm. <coughs> important game now next uh, month against Bulgaria. Uh, so we see they are looking with a lot of youngs in this team. They do it uh, very well against uh, Turkey. Mm-hmm. They won uh, away against Turkey. So the with Turkey a lot of well. young. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. Well. <laughs> exactly. Did they learn it from you though? Did they? Did you teach them? <laughs> <laughs> this guy is amazing. This this guy is very young. I think he's 21 years, and uh, he's very. It's a new generation, you know. You you need to have this. Uh, yeah. Always you need to 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 change, you know. And this comes from the academy. When the owners they invest in academies, also is uh, uh, the profit we take is the national team and the clubs. Mm. But I think it's important that a lot of young players stay. Uh, within the country until they're mature enough to go abroad. Yeah, we've seen a lot of, you know, youngsters like, for example, De- Jaden Sancho that went to Dortmund and he's yes. uh, got leaps and bounds, but he's got that maturity. If, if a player isn't mature enough at a young age to go abroad, they're not going to thrive. They'll just fail. Yeah, it's, you know, it's always a difficult uh, decision. You now, some mm. uh, times come one club, a big club, and uh, they give some offer, and uh, at that time, with 18 and 17, uh, you just think maybe it's the my last opportunity, you know, that I will have. So it's always a very, very tough decision. So uh, uh, I also know uh, this uh, Turkey. He he's playing by Salzburg, and uh, they have a lot of teams uh, want him. But uh, maybe uh, he say now at the moment uh, he, he wants to stay more one year to get more baggage in Champions League. They will play. So we see, maybe he's thinking, but you never know. Okay, he must stay because there he will play, but you know, maybe he gets injury every time, everything yeah. is in, the, in football. So it's, it's a short it's, career, it's, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so it's a very difficult decision that time. So uh, it's like uh, my, I was uh, 17, when the common manager and, and tells me to, to come to Hungary, you know. So I was 17 years old. Uh, and I take like a good opportunity and they came and uh, I was lucky. The other guy who comes with me, uh, he's, uh, he never played uh, like a professional after. You know, wow. After two years, he, two, three years, he's still playing by third, fourth division after he stopped and they start to, 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 to work, you know. So uh, it's a lot of things. You, you need to have a, uh, work a lot, work very hard. It's going to be difficult situations that you need to pass. And uh, also luck, you need to have luck to be in the good. Uh... That's right, absolutely. And hopefully the, the next crop of Ammonia players, the under-15s, under-16s, will take heed to that information or that, that advice because it's, it's very important. Very, very important. Um, you, know, you mentioned the Hungarian national team. One more question for me. Do you uh, keep in contact with Adam Lang? <laughs> yes, yes. I, you know, I know very well his manager, and we play together in the national team. You know, mm-hmm. by the time when the, when the, he he goes to who has the the opportunity to go to Omonia, we speak, and uh, and I just tell him goes that it's gonna be a, <laughs> you're gonna enjoy it too much. Mm, brilliant. Well, yeah. let's just hope he stays yeah. for a long term because he's done very well. Done very very yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I saw also he played national team very good. Mm-hmm. So for national team of Hungary, it's good that he is playing a good level. So that's right. I, that's right. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, well, I've got some questions from the viewers. Okay, now pick the All most popular right. ones because I've got over five hundred questions, and I I had to go through each one of them. I was like, that's current, that's current, that's been asked before. So I'm going to ask you. The <laughs> yeah. Ones. Okay. So number one, what's your favorite moment at Omonia? At Omonia, oh, I have a lot, but uh, <laughs> the. <laughs> Uh, the special one, one that when uh, we took the the, the championship mm. and uh, we go to 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 celebrate in the uh, in the center uh, where was the ammonia uh, board uh, was having the so we go there when we come with the bus you know <laughs> a lot of people in everywhere you know in the and we cannot go with by bus ah, it was amazing this was amazing we never forget this time brilliant absolutely brilliant what's your favorite goal Against up well. But <laughs> Are you going to say that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right in the top corner. He wasn't saving it. He got two goalkeepers. None of them were going to save it. <laughs> yes, yeah, <this> was nice. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic. What's your most memorable match? Your favorite match? Oh, I think uh, one of the best games that I played 
maybe it was one of the most sad moment in uh, in Omonia uh, against the uh, Metalist Harkiv away mm-hmm. when yeah. we were leading to new to, and uh, we let them uh, draw uh, i i think uh, this was one of the my best games and was one very important game for mm-hmm. us and uh, we just uh, uh, left to go the, the, there was a big opportunity yeah yeah we we seem to be robbed in europe and, yeah. and that's why I'm, okay. that's yeah and that leads it actually leads me on to my next question uh, do you believe Omonia can qualify for the Champions League group stage I know we've got Red Star Belgrade and then possibly Olympia Goz and um, yeah hmm. absolutely uh, it's very difficult you know but uh, you see uh, you, you play away against uh, Varsovia and uh, was a very good very strong yeah. team with a lot of uh, experience in Europe and uh, they just did it you, you need uh, to play top level. You need to have a lot of luck because without luck, you cannot, uh, against these teams, you cannot win without luck. It was uh, also against uh, now Franz Varos play against Celtic and we yeah. beat uh, the Celtic away. Uh, we play a very good football, but you had a lot of luck also. So this is needed, you know, against this team is needed. And uh, what I saw, you know, I saw, I watched one, two games and uh, some highlights from Ammonia that the team is very together, you know, they, they, are, they are fighting for each other. And this is very important that in these games. So I will be here like a, a supporter. I'm oh, always yeah. watching uh, the, the scores and uh, I hope they, they will did. Mm. I know. I don't think home advantage makes any difference right now because no fans are allowed in the stadium. Um, but I think with the match being played at six p.m. Cyprus time, the weather's going to be pretty exactly. hot. Pretty exactly. hot. So exactly. let, let's see if the uh, Red Star players can can cope with that. I know Stankovic, their head coach, he's quite wary of of Ammonia, and obviously yeah. they just about got through. Uh, they beat the Albanian champions in the last round, yeah. so and they struggled. So maybe maybe yeah. uh, it's hard to. I don't know. You know, yeah, yeah, I saw uh, and I spoke with one Serbian friend uh, and uh, the team uh, before with the other coach was a much, much more aggressive team. You know, mm. they were pushing, pressing and, more, uh, and now he says it's not the same way. They are not with the same uh, tempo. So he said that the team from uh, Red Star now is uh, much worse than it was uh, two years ago. And uh, mm-hmm. and you know you play at six o'clock in Cyprus with this humidity and everything. It's very difficult. Who is not there? Who is not usual to to? I remember one time we we, we lost by penalties against the Red Star, but uh, I remember in second half they were dying. You know we mm-hmm. go to extra time and we could win that game, uh, and but they were dying. So it was I think it's gonna be the same now. You know it's very important the first half. You don't take goals. You yeah. know, we try to to keep the result because second time they will, they will get the uh, talent, then they can win the game there. Yeah, well, you know, we possess a lot of pace going forward. Um, Asante is absolutely rapid, and Bolfiak's yeah. skill, his ability, and and Duris, you know, he, he came from Anorthosis, and a lot of people were very wary about him because he didn't have a great season last season. But he won that penalty at Legia, and that's an experience. Yes. Striker, he got his body in front of the defender right at the right time. Excellent on the penalty. So it's the experience and these things count. Every little detail counts. So I think we've got a good chance. I think we've got a good chance. Yes, yes. I hope so that they they can do it. Brilliant. Right. So who was your favorite coach at Omonia when you were there? At Omonia, my favorite coach. Ooh, difficult question. I, uh, I think for me it was Lemonis. Okay. Uh, we are playing good football. Uh, and uh, we had a good discipline in the in the field. Mm, brilliant. Uh, right, uh, two more questions. Would you return to the club as part of the coaching staff if you had the opportunity? Uh, for sure. <laughs> oh, money, so oh. money. <laughs> but uh, I, I don't know that uh, if I will be a coach or not. Uh, we, I start to, to just... Uh, I never, you know, before I never think to be to be a coach. Uh, to be honest, I never, uh, I never see myself like a coach. But uh, now with the the second team in here in France, we should play with the young guys. That uh, and I must to be like coach that with with them uh, inside the pitch and outside. Also, I'm helping you know with the coach uh, stuff. 
uh, we see. I, I'm trying. I'm liking that the beginning. We see how 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 it's going to proceed. Brilliant, fantastic. Okay, final question. Mm, this is a difficult one. Which of your former teammates do you think would do well in this current team? I think for me, one of the best players that uh, I played there, I think uh, two of them. I think uh, uh, Nuno Assis, mm -hmm. he was, he was mm -hmm. so great. I think one of the best players that uh, I play and then the, that I think uh, 35 or 36, year, 36 years old. So, uh, and I think uh, Constantinos, he was okay. he was great. I like him too much. I think he, I know that he was in the end of the career at that time. But uh, you see, you know, you can see just by one touch how he, he was touching the ball, how he was finished. That he he was amazing player. So these two guys in the in a good age, <laughs> they they will be amazing. Yeah, it's, it's experience. It goes back to what we were saying before about Luis. When you've got that experience and you won international yeah. caps and you played at the highest level, yeah. you know, okay, the, the Super League is very competitive, but it's that know how, it's that instinct, you, you know, exactly you've got to do it as well, you know. So, yeah, they're good choices, good choices there. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Great choices. <laughs> well, look, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on, on a no choice this podcast. It's, um, hopefully, we can have you back on again sometime. We can talk about other things as well if you, if you like. For sure, for sure. It would want to be my pleasure. Lovely. Leo, thank you ever okay. so much. Have you got a message for the Omonia fans? Uh, they still love them. I will never forget them. And uh, Lovely. Uh, hope to go to the groups in Europe they deserve. Come on. Lovely. Right. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Have a lovely evening. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Bye.